So good morning. You all look taller and older. I'm always over there. So uh, you're probably thinking, well, you all look younger and better looking because we're used to Trevor and Brad. So yeah, and you'd be right. You'd be so right. Uh, so uh, these three handsome men here are here because there is a youth takeover. And we want to introduce ourselves a little bit more and tell you a little bit. But first, before I do that, Brad is not here today. He is at a church called Axiom Church. And today they're celebrating their six-year anniversary. Uh, I know, right? For those, for those who don't know why we're clapping, that would be our start of church that we sent out, that we uh, kick-started uh, six years ago. And it was interesting. There was these youth guys, these young guys, uh, one in particular, the whole entire uh, youth ministry decided to head up and they wanted to influence and impact their community and their age level and all that. And so they got this idea, literally took most of the church with them at that age and, and headed out. And they're just thriving. They're doing so well. And I understand they have a really good coffee shop, maybe one of the second best coffee shops um, <laughs> out there as well. So enough with Brad. We wish them well. We are celebrating God's glory and what he's doing at Axiom today in downtown Peoria. It's a really good day. Good day, but this is going to be even a great day here. With these guys, I've got Caden Dodge right there, and I've got Russell Wilson. So that's right. And so uh, I want to ask you guys some questions. Uh, going into youth ministry and all of this, there's been a lot happening this summer. The building's been going up, but for sure you haven't like forgot about the kids. In fact, you were putting them in situations where you were able to grow those relationships uh, and strengthen them and even come in on board and, and go with that. Russell gets married, um, and then uh, he goes on a honeymoon, and the last day of his honeymoon, he gets on a bus and goes to camp for junior high. So uh, with that, we shortened his honeymoon, basically. So we owe him another honeymoon. Uh, so with that, um, I want to ask you some questions. Um, there's a lot of camps out there, but why do we do the camp that we do? Why did we do uh, junior high camp? Yeah, I think so. I think one of the main reasons why we do camp uh, here, there's, there's a lot of things that you could say, but I think it comes down to two things, uh, and that'd be community and Jesus. Camp is an awesome opportunity for students, junior high or high school, to take time away from what they're used to, from what they're comfortable to. Uh, usually students will get away from their world, from friends, from family, from work, from school, from Chipotle, uh, and then we take them out to this area and it's, they're totally on their own. And they get the opportunity to meet people they never met before, to have new friends, to continue growing in relationships with old friends, and so it's a really cool opportunity. And through that, while they can have some strength and reliance on their new friends, it's, awesome. it's also an awesome opportunity for them to rely on Jesus. And our whole focus is to get these students to grow more into Jesus, to get them to know that Jesus is their Lord and Savior and that he loves them uh, no matter what they do and no matter what they go through in their life. And so after camp, one of our goals is to bring students back into their real world uh, and to know that, hey, just because we lived in this area where like, things were different and it was comfortable and it was easy, like, let's bring Jesus back. Let's live out that change. Let's do things differently because of what camp, because of what Jesus has done in your life. So I think those are probably the two things of why I would say we do camp. All right. And so it's not necessarily where we go, but what was, what was kind of that, the theme of that camp this year? For that junior high? Yeah, for junior high camp, uh, we went to Young Life Camp up in Lost Canyon. Has anybody ever been to Lost Canyon? Raise your hand. It's a really cool spot. It was kind of more like a mini resort. It wasn't Club really a camp. <laughs> we had like multiple bunk beds in a bed, showers that weren't outside, uh, which we'll talk about later. Uh, or but a lot of cows. But a lot of like, it was a really cool camp. And so the junior hires got the opportunity just to hear the gospel story of Jesus. Uh, we went through the whole week of learning about who Jesus is in their life, why Jesus loves them, what he can do for them. And ultimately just show that like Jesus forgives sins and Jesus washes away the things that are dirty, the things that are bad in our life. We can't do that on our own. Uh, we're still gonna have stains. We're still gonna be a little nasty, but Jesus washes that away. And so we had some students who were able to see that, which was really cool. Uh, and throughout the whole week, it was just, again, more growth and more of a learning how to be in a better relationship with Jesus, which was really cool. That's right. And you saw Connor's video. Uh, he was really impacted by that. And uh, gave his heart to, to Jesus that day. So it's really cool. So, so let's switch over to high school <coughs> camp. Um, with high school, uh, Kate, <coughs> I'm going to cough something. <coughs> oh, sorry. So, Tisha's bringing uh, you water. I know. Isn't that awesome? So thank you. I'm going to take this real quick. So with high school, give me a moment. Just, I'll just turn my back to you. I'll ask a question. So, hey, Caden, for uh, high so, school, what I, was so high school, the uh, With uh, high school, um, tell me about high school camp. 
But really, actually, uh, you had to head this up. So uh, Caden's on that intern program where we, we bring him in for one year, and he's here, been here almost three years. <laughs> and so, like, I know, right? <laughs> so, yeah, and he got to do all the footwork. He had to do all this work and put into that while Russell's off getting graduating from college and getting married and all that. Caden's putting Thank this you. together. So, yeah. So, Caden, you answer this. Tell me about the high school pam- camp and uh, the theme and the focus of that. Yeah, so the way that we do our high school camp is we don't go with another organization. We don't go with another, like, third party. Um, we put it on all by ourselves. We uh, rent out a uh, camping space, and we're just going to fully immerse ourselves with, like, one another. And then that way we get, like, this direct line from what Russell and I would like to teach on and what we think the kids should experience and what they actually get to experience. There's no, like, extra fluff that they... Um, that they encounter while at camp. So for our high school camp this year, we decided to look at the very simple story of Job um, and relate that to it's our... Not, it's not simple. That was a joke. Yeah, it was a joke. <laughs> not simple. It was a joke. Student ministry. <laughs> and, uh, but the correlation between Job's life and the life that, that we all live is one of, of trials. We have high periods in our life, and we also have very low points. And so how do we respond to those things being Christians? And uh, early Christians at that, kids who have just started their walk, kids who are maybe a couple years into, into this relationship, what do you do when something doesn't go your way, when you stumble, when you fall, or when you're like on the, on the highs of highs? So this is what we got to talk with our kids about, and essentially, what we get to do coming out of camp is, and what, like, as parents, you also get to help with, is how do we connect this to our everyday life? Because you can see the correlation between your spiritual life and this idea of walking close with Jesus, relying on him when times are hard. But how do we now bring that conversation into, well, this test that I was studying really hard for, I failed. Or this girl who I really liked, she turned me down. Like, all these kinds of things, it's like, this is, a, this is a real life conversation that we can have that also applies to us spiritually. So, mending those two things together, bringing them together, showing that your spiritual life and your real life are really one and the same, I think, was the biggest theme of camp. So cool, because um, I oversee all family life ministry, uh, the, the birth through high school part, and so that's why, if you don't know who I am, I'm never here, I'm over there, um, to see the journey. Um, when we got into uh, Thrive and Generate and uh, Austin Blackman uh, started that idea of some of the, w- the scope and sequence and what it was going to focus on, uh, we've been true to that. Um, done a really amazing job helping kids um, go through some wrestling, some really big things. It's not easy. It's not handed to them. There's some work. Caden does a really good job, a really good job uh, speaking into that, telling stories. <clears throat> He's a master storyteller, but um, doesn't come with like so this is what you have to do. It, it really causes that. Job is tough. Um, to give that to an adult is tough. And I think you guys just did an amazing job and uh, pulled that together. So yeah, really, really good job. And so, I mean, we could talk all day about, about Job and what we discussed, but I would actually really like to share with you guys some of the testimonies that our students brought back from camp. And part of camp, just so you guys can try to understand, is... Uh, we're trying to grow in community with each other just as much as in our relationship with Jesus. And so we have a lot of fun. We do hang out. We do um, play games and go to the beach and eat really good food. And it's all part of like our camp experience. So you're going to hear these stories. Just here you go. (laughs) The funniest thing about camp was Keegan getting pushed into a bush. The funniest thing about camp was watching Keegan get pushed into a bush. The funniest part of camp was definitely getting pushed into a bush by Russell. (laughs) The funnest thing was getting to know everyone and playing kill ball, you know, getting hit in the face a couple times. Pretty fun. My favorite memory from camp was um, the last night. Chloe, Megan, Kaylee, Kimberlyn and I, we all stayed up until like 1.30 in the morning probably. And we kind of just got to talk about um, some of the things that we didn't get to talk about like during the message. Um, so just like personal stuff and life stuff, things that we were kind of getting caught up on for each other or like with each other. Um, so that was really cool. 
My favorite's probably my first year uh, I ever went to camp. Um, I met a bunch of new friends and like we spent the whole time together. My favorite memory of camp was bedtime stories. Every night before we went to bed, Mary Frances would tell us embarrassing stories and then we also just got to talk. And it was cool because we got to like laugh and grow closer to each other and then also get cool advice. My favorite memory about camp was when our whole cabin went out and sat in the grass and played mafia for a long time. My favorite memory of camp was when we were all at the beach playing spike ball. We played spike ball a ton and it was super fun because we could play with tons of people and it just never got bored. One way that I experienced God was through the worship because we were all just really in that moment together and um, just hearing everybody's voices together. It sounded so beautiful and I think that's when I always, especially at camp, really experience God's presence. I experienced God through morning devotions. After reading through the passage of Job, I would ask myself questions that related more to my life and then either through message or tent time, they would be answered. I think I experienced God differently this year than I have in most. I think that um, I saw God most through the conversations that I had with people, um, just because I was able to dive deeper into my relationships with them. And then through that, I was able to deepen my relationship with God as well. I feel like I experienced God in a lot of ways at camp, but one of the biggest ways was when I did my one-on-one -on -one time with Mary Frances. And when, and we were talking and like, we all, we learned more about each other. And I think that kind of led to how God does everything for a reason. And that just helped me, and I think He wanted me to know that. I experienced God really th during our morning devotions, where we just sit on the beach and really just like communicate and see all the things He made. I feel like I experienced God because He felt like a fatherly figure to me the whole time. So I just felt like He was like this father that was just watching over us all and just happy to see us all having fun. I was able to experience God at camp through worship around the campfire every night. Um, I experienced God a lot through like the morning devotions and the talks and through watching like how Job, even though like he went through so many struggles and hardships, he still like praised the Lord and his faith remained strong. Camp this year has really impacted me because I took away from the story of Job and it helped me realize that God will give me all these challenges and He'll help me overcome them and like fight my battles with me. Personally, I feel like camp impacted me because I'm going into my senior year of high school and through that comes a lot of worries and stress. And so watching like how Job remained faithful and remained like strong with the Lord is really impactful and inspirational. Camp impacted me by just allowing me to come out of my shell and just build relationships with people because I had an opportunity to play games and just talk with people that I wouldn't normally Talk to. Camp has impacted me because I realized that I need to have a really strong foundation in God throughout my whole life and also I was able to um, meet new people and grow closer to certain people and it just gives me like a good group of girls who I can ask for like prayer and for encouragement and advice and that was something that I was really needing. Um, camp has impacted me differently each year but I think the um, thing that's most consistent is that I change as a person and my world perspective changes each year too. Um, whatever we're learning about at camp, it always has to do with something that's going on in our everyday lives. And so just being able to think about that through, for a week and um, have the chance to reflect about what that means for us is always really, it changes something in your heart. So Caden's gone. We asked him to leave. Uh, so he disappeared during that. Uh, so pray, <clears throat> pray, I'm still doing this. Prayers for Caden, uh, and if you see him out there, uh, congratulate him and, uh, for doing such a great job in his almost three years of ministry. He's going off, he's, he's done two years of college, and he's going to go live on campus and get more college in and more time and all that, so he'll still be around and all that, but we're, we're sending him on. It's, it's been long enough, and uh, so give him a hug, give him some money, he'll need that, uh, those kind of things, and so Caden, God bless you, you just a great job, so... It's going to be hard. I'm going to miss having my twin. So, yeah. So, uh, let's focus on Russell and, uh, and where, he, where he's come from and that. So, Russell, can you just, uh, I mean, some people are starting to get to know you, hear your story a little bit, but can you tell us a little bit more of an introduction of who you are? 
For sure. Uh, so again, my name is Russell Wilson, not the CX quarterback, just a little smaller, different skin tone, but that's okay. Um, I was born and raised here in Phoenix. I have uh, mom and dad, Paul and Paula Wilson, and then I have three younger sisters, but I am, and I'm the oldest, but I'm not the tallest. So that's kind of humbling, but that's okay. <laughs> We're getting through that. It's been a long journey. Um, <laughs> And so, yeah, I was born and raised here in Phoenix. I went to like, three different elementary schools, three different high schools. Uh, so I'm really accustomed to change and meeting people and being outgoing, uh, at least I think so. And then uh, I also went to two different churches to kind of throughout growing up here, Christ Church of the Valley and then also Salt and Light Community Church, which is a church that my dad started up. Uh, so, yeah, very accustomed to a lot of that stuff. Um, when I was about 11, I was baptized, but I really only got baptized because I thought it would make my dad happy and proud. I saw actually this one kid get baptized, and then I think it was like a month later, I told my dad I wanted to get baptized because he got a party and like a ton of presents. And so people came to like my baptism party, and I got presents when I knew it was kind of cool. So bad reason, yes, I know. But that's where Jesus comes in. Uh, my junior year of high school, I went to this camp, and that's where I felt like I really experienced God for the first time and just kind of realized uh, who he is and what he can do and what he can be in my life if I fully commit my life to him. And so I kind of accepted Jesus again into my life my junior year. Uh, and then into my senior year of high school, I went to this camp again, and I accepted the call into ministry. And so that was a really cool experience where I just felt like God was hovering over me and letting me know, like, hey, everything that I have done for you, like every personality, every character trait that you have, I have equipped you for this idea of youth ministry. And you also look like a kid, so that's another bonus. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, and so what I did is I went off to Manhattan Christian College, which not in New York, uh, in Kansas. When I was in my senior year of high school, there was literally this kid who was like, dude, that's so awesome. You're going to Manhattan, New York. You're going to play soccer and go to school there. It's like, yeah, it's Kansas. And he literally goes, well, that's not cool. <laughs> and I was like, Thank you very much. So went to Manhattan Christian College, uh, got to study youth ministry, pastoral ministry, and family ministry, uh, and I got to play soccer, and that was an awesome four years of my life. But the best part about going to Manhattan Christian College is I met this awesome girl named Mary Frances McNellis, and on May 26th of this year, I got to marry that girl. I think there's going to be a photo up here. <gasps> so she is... She's awesome. She's actually at another friend's wedding of hers in San Antonio right now. She's flying back, so that's why she's not here. But if you ever see her, uh, tell her, just say like I embarrassed her or something up on stage, because then that'll get her really red, and you guys would appreciate it. But again, that was the best part of going to Manhattan Christian College. Uh, and then Kevin reached out to me, and I got to come out here and be your guys' youth pastor. And I'm super stoked about that. Yeah, uh, it's really cool. Mary Frances is amazing. She's awesome. Uh, such a joy. She's got a smile that kind of goes forever. Uh, it's just never ending. And, uh, and I've known Russell since literally for a long, 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 long time um, and uh, watched his journey. And it's just funny how you watch a journey and you can feel the prompting of, of God to know that God has made him out for such a thing and such a purpose. And some people are still trying to dial that in. I wonder why God made me and created me. This whole entire time, God's got hit stamped on his head, youth pastor. Like, Russell is fun. Uh, in that wedding picture, he's wearing Spider-Man socks. He's, you know, in the, he's just really... All my groomsmen had Marvel socks. Yeah, so, so uh, he's just made, uh, he's done a lot. So in your Manhattan experience, you had a lot of, you got a lot of influences uh, and people and experiences. So can you share a little bit about that? Like, what's been guiding your heart and who has God put in your path along the way uh, to, to get to this place? Yeah, so uh, throughout college and throughout even in the high school years, uh, I've been involved in a bunch of different youth ministries, and I've been able to be a student in youth ministries, I've been able to be a volunteer, I've been able to be an intern, and so MCC, short for Manhattan Christian College, allowed me to have that opportunity to be like a volunteer and to be an intern, and that was really cool. And kind of throughout my accumulation of youth ministry uh, career, I guess, uh, I was just able to see a whole bunch of different things, and it was really cool. And so those are things that I wanted to implement, and that affirmed my passion and my desire for continuing to pursue the Lord and continuing uh, to use my gifts for youth ministry and to hang out with kids. Um, but at MCC, I met a ton of cool people. Obviously, uh, you saw my wife, who was the coolest of them all. And then I met friends from, like, all over the place. I mean, a kid coming from Arizona out into Manhattan, Kansas. I have a friend from Arkansas, a friend from Omaha, a friend from Amarillo, Texas, uh, a friend from Indiana, from, like, all over the place. And that's just been super cool. Many, many people that have went to MCC were a big part of my life and helped uh, just start this new foundation of who I am in Jesus and who I am to come in years. All right. So 
he, you seem to build a crowd. There's been people traveling who come in and want to see Russell and see the vision and all that. Uh, serious, strong leader. In fact, there's three people. So we have Mary Frances and Russell who came from Manhattan Christian, and Mary Frances graduated also from Kansas State. Yeah. Yep. Two At degrees. the same time, two degrees. Four years. She's an underachiever. Uh, so, but, uh, but then there's three more that are coming from Manhattan Christian and moving down here and are going to be part of this ministry. One you saw in the background uh, playing guitar today, and his name is Andrew Matthews. He has two first names, um, both biblical, so that's something, right? And so, Andrew, stand up. I don't know if they can see you. Will you run? Will you run around the whole thing real no, quick? No, no, no. So just stand there. You're good. You're good. Run really fast. No, no. Go. Just stand. You're good. Uh, you're not running. Run around so everyone can see you, no? So that's Andrew Matthews. He plays like 12 instruments, right? Yeah, he can play bass, acoustic, bass, uh, piano, drums. And he's, I consider this an instrument, but his voice is like a mixture of Fergie and Jesus. So if you want to hear it, come to youth ministry and you can hear him sing. That'd be really good. <laughs> so good. Yeah, uh, so we're probably going to wrap. He's staying at our casita right now. And uh, we'll, I'll get up my accordion. We'll, we'll have some time. It'll be good. Um, Andrew's got a sweet spirit. Like He really does have this huge uh, walk in faith. And um, it'll be interesting if you want to have a deeper conversation, a transparent conversation, if you want to have someone who's going to like help ground you and just have a real like a good um, experience, invite him to coffee. Or he doesn't drink coffee. Invite, invite him to Dr. Pepper. And, no, that's me. Uh, invite you. me to Dr. Pepper. So he, He'll invite eat him. anything. Invite yeah. him to any place you want for food, <laughs> for food. and he will be there and he food. will eat it all. Yeah. But seriously, it's a really cool thing to see what God, God is doing. And there's a couple more coming down who are in Ethiopia right now, finishing a couple, uh, a little mission trip and visiting some people in Kenya, some family and that, that'll be here shortly too. Really cool. So that's you and all these things. But um, for this experience and stuff like that, we're also here to experience and um, hear about God and what he's doing in that. So you see God where he has been, what he's doing today. Where is God going? What is the vision and the focus for high school and, and, and junior high ministry? Where, where are you going to be taking us? Yeah, so really excited about what God's laid on my heart for the junior high and high school, so just student ministry as a whole. I'm not going to tell you guys a whole lot because if you guys want to know more, you can be my volunteers or you can just come and experience and hang out. And there's some students that I'm going to relay that on August 4th. But essentially, uh, in my life, my dad kind of gave me this life verse. Uh, it comes from Luke 2.52, uh, which was, And Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. And so we see that there's four ways that Jesus grew in his life. Uh, in wisdom, which is mentally, uh, in stature, which is physically, in favor with God, which is spiritually, and in favor with man, which is relationally. And so we see Jesus at the age of 13 uh, in the temple, like blowing people's minds. And then we don't see him for like 17 years up until about 30 years old when he starts his ministry. And so something happened in this little gap period. There was something that went on. And so what I just kind of came to the conclusion to, and I think it's true, is that Jesus grew. Uh, he grew in these four ways, physically, relationally, spiritually, and mentally. And so my challenge and uh, my vision for the youth ministry is that throughout our time, uh, whether you're a seventh grader to senior or whether you're just there junior and senior or wherever you're at in our youth ministry, you're going to grow in these four ways. Now, the ultimate goal is to grow like Jesus. And if we can grow in these four ways, we're going to be exemplifying Jesus. And we're going to be growing just as Jesus did. But we're going to try to hit on growing physically, mentally, spiritually, relationally, and everything we do in the youth ministry. So that's kind of like the vision. Uh, and then me and my team kind of set up some goals that we'd want to pursue and focus on. <clears throat> and so those goals, those little goals will be... Uh, Threefold, having students understand their identity in Christ uh, and accepting Jesus into their life and knowing that, okay, I'm rooted in Christ. Jesus is my identity. And then going on to there, the second thing would be to understand that there's a heart transformation. There's a change that goes on in your life once you've accepted Jesus. And then the third thing would be to know that, hey, I'm empowered through Jesus now. Because of this change, I get to live out what I now know in Jesus. And so our hope is that to fulfill the vision, we can see students go through these three goals. And in those three goals, there's about five values that me and the youth ministry team want to stick to, no matter what we do. And these values, there's a ton of values we could have chose, a lot that Jesus emphasized. But I think five uh, for myself that I really want to continue and pursue here in the youth ministry uh, is love, truth, grace, humility, and passion. Uh, so just those five things, and I'll talk about them more later, but if you want to know, I can also talk to you on the side. But I just think those five things are great ways to uh, continue to build relationships with people, continue to get to know people better, uh, and also to continue to be more like Jesus. So essentially, that's what's going to be happening in the youth ministry. And if you want to know more, please come talk to me or come check it out. Yeah, and he's recruiting. So uh, he, he didn't get that. 
Uh, I know Tisha and I have asked permission to be on his team for high school ministry on Sunday nights. And so in two weeks, when we start that Saturday service, we're doing a little bit of a split. We're putting, um, during the same time that the Saturday night service is going on, the junior high service is going to be going on next door. Is that correct? And so... Yeah. Did I get it right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, we didn't change that, did we? So, yeah. So we have the junior high service that's going to be there, and then Sunday night's still for the high school service. And we have Andrew Matthews, who's going to be leading up and working with the students and uh, future students uh, and uh, with the band and uh, that experience as well. A lot of plans. I know we were starting to talk about our scope and sequence and our next year plans. Um, Russell is kind of annoying. Uh, He's really organized. Uh, he is pounding on my door with ideas and thoughts. Um, like, it seems like, just okay. <laughs> like, he's just like, he has so many things as far as the camp. I just I want did. your attention. I know. Give your attention to this coffee shop. And then shop, let's do Kevin. this, and let's do this, and let's do this. And he's so excited. There's a lot of places and a lot of that. But what you're going to see is opportunities. Um, and you, this is why you want your students because relationships are going to happen and when those relationships happen and they're healthy and they're safe and they're secure and they're with the mind and the heart of Jesus all of those other things can happen you can show love you can show grace you can, you can show passion you can help someone understand who they are and in the struggles in the world that they're at and even with what Caden was talking about those bearings of if all else fails who am I? and if all else fails who is Jesus? so good so Super, super good. So um, I want to do this. I want to pray over you and uh, have all of you, you can do, just sit there and pray. You can kind of reach out your arms if that's, if that's comfortable for you. But I want to pray, not just for you, but what you represent. The leaders that are coming to join you, the leaders that have come before you, the students that are come for you, the parents that are uh, part of this, and then I'm going to send you off, all right? Dear Lord, Thank you for this man. Thank you for uh, the love, the grace, the mercy, all of the, the things that you put inside of Russell. He has such a heart for you. I've known him, it feels like, since he was just a child. But now I see a man who is uh, just got his arms wrapped around you, who trusts you, puts his faith, um, puts everything in you and says, I want to walk with you and I want to go where you'd have me go. I pray for his ministry that you've given him. I pray that you would uh, protect him, you would provide for him. I pray for the leaders, I pray for the parents, I pray for the students. Everything that you thought of, Lord, everything that you put in fruition for him uh, would, would come to fruition, Lord. We pray so much for this team. I believe personally that there's not a better investment that we can make in this church than in our next generation. And so, Lord, would that come for your glory, for your purpose? We honor you and you say this in your name. Amen. All right.